Hey, King Goose here with the Deadbot level editor. Today I'm going to be doing a kind of basic and advanced tutorial on how to make a Deadbot map using the level editor, which is, uh, it's free, it's given along with the game, so you have to own the game to have the level editor, but there's no extra purchase needed to get it. But yeah. It gives no instructions on how to use it, which is why I'm making this tutorial. I will, this will be a two-parter with the, uh, with me running through what you need to know to make a function, functioning map. And then the next one will have more advanced stuff. So yeah, let's get right into it. First, we are going to set up how big you want your map to be. It's shown the lower left, it's got Tighter than the x by y, or x axis, horizontal, y axis, vertical. Uh, you can put, you can change your song later on, and we can get to all that. Yeah, we got to change the dimensions, because it starts out with a really big x dimension. Or, well, yeah, and I'm not sure why it's so big. So we're going to knock it down to something that will fit on our screen. So uh, you've got new map file, self-explanatory, open map file, self-explanatory, save map file, self-explanatory, and then edit room settings. So you can change the name of your level, you can change the dimensions, which is what we're about to do. You can change your music uh, from old game soundtracks, which we get into. Uh, you can change the background, which, it's interesting. City, city again, and plane of life, as far as I can tell, all have the exact same background. Um, but docks is the only one that's actually different. Because you see, this is the background we have right here. It's the city. And we already have city, just show you or select it. And, uh, city again, exact same thing. And plane of life still the same thing. So I'm not going to question it, but docks gives you something different to work with. But yeah, we have it on for we have it on city for more basic map. Now for the dimensions, I will change the width. Now you can change it to numbers that aren't actually a full uh, pixel on this grid you can see here, and I think. 1800. That's good. <laughs> so now we have our proper map slides, and we can make it taller if we want, but it starts off, uh, if you make it, if you make it taller or shorter, it will take away or add to the bottom, which is a bit unusual, but yeah. So, we will hop onto our toolbar, and we now have wars. We have all this different wallpaper, which can seem a bit overwhelming at first, but it's all basically the same thing. You have two types, a standard wallpaper, which it tells you, apartment wallpaper, green, wars, and you have wallpaper front. The, there's only one difference between the two of these. When you open up wallpaper, you can choose your room size by holding on the top down, sorry, upper left down, and that's the only way you can make a map, from upper left to lower right. And you can choose just how big to make your room. And you'll see you have these walls, which are the actual hitboxes. There's these dark spots, or dark lines. Then you have the back. The back is pretty much purely cosmetic. It only has one function, which I can later mention, it has to do with music. And then you have the wallpaper fronts. Now, when you select it, you'll see it doesn't actually have any siding, which means this will have no collision, while these will have collision. And you can actually delete the back and still have the sides. And I, you can't move them, but it's a trick you can use later if you want to make, like, a ledge and nothing in the toolkit suits your fancy. You can use this to make a ledge, because it counts as a hitbar. It counts as a functioning platform or object. So, what you can mainly do with the fronts 
if you can put it on top you can put it on top of the standard wallpaper to add a bit of variety make it more colorful make stuff stick out and you can do that but other than that all of these wallpapers are the same they just have a different style and uh, each front is like always slightly lighter than its standard wall and it'll be directly beneath it and they are alphabetical and let us move on to the next section house the house has all sorts of stuff um these are basically just objects you can place with that the reaper can interact with uh there are functioning elevators but that's complicated and we will get on that later and not in this tutorial but so you start out facing streets which uh the entire street and it it's just you can tell it's top down you've got the road and just gray underneath whatever you want to call it the uh, entire street has a hitbox which hitbox isn't the right word it has a i guess functioning surface so uh you can have it in a different direction like you can flip these on the y-axis and sorry, the y-axis and the x-axis and uh that will change its direction You can also, while you're holding it, and or, and it's not set down, you can roll your mouse wheel to change its x-axis. Right. Uh, you can also use the arrow keys to move the entire map uh, by one block. And it moves every object that you've placed down. And yeah, and when you regularly just place an object, it'll place one, you have to reselect it. But if you hold down shift, you can place multiple. So, I will show you a really good thing to do for a map. Uh, if, oh, uh, there are no side boundaries here. If the Reaper is just walking around, he can walk right off the side and fall into the void forever and ever. There's no kill zone. So where well, you can actually use the arrow keys to move the map over a bit and you can place a bit of siding regularly you can like make a kind of boundary because the reaper can't jump by just lifting it up one the only reason i don't do that because they can't see it it's out of bounds but it acts as a boundary or a wall i like to give them a bit of room because when you're interacting with the car and uh you're like selecting a weapon it will push you to like the back of the car whatever direction it's facing so i like to give an extra bit of room so that he doesn't get pushed out of bounds which can absolutely happen and get him stuck which isn't a good map design and yeah just add a bit on both sides and you've now got your play area. Oh. And the rest of these things, you've got docks which are similar, a bit smaller uh, with the uh, grey area. But you can use it if you want to make your map more interesting. You've got stairs, pretty self-explanatory. You can use them to go up or down a little. Now, these things... <coughs> These are reference frames for how big you might want your room to be. You can place it down and it just kind of like, it's there. You can use it to kind of outline how big you want your room to be. You've just got big and small. You want to delete them before actually posting a map. I'm not sure if they actually show up, but it's recommended not to leave them for any reason. And, uh, You've got crates. Uh, you can open this one, this one you can't. It's just kind of used as an object. 
uh, ladders, you press E to climb on them. Now, when using ladders, I would not uh, place the bottom one because then I think uh, you can climb down out of bounds and get stuck in the ground or maybe face through the ceiling, something like that. Because it'll uh, just jump you in the middle of it and your Reaper's hitbox is a bit bigger than the ladder itself, so it'll push you down a bit. So it'll be hanging a little off the bottom there. If you want to use a ladder, you just have to place a bunch of them up. Uh, you can... Let's say you want to use this crane. You can make a crane tower. And, uh... Yeah. You can do that if you want, although stuff is a bit too close together. It's just an example. But yeah, he'd be able to climb on through this. Alright. So, uh, I'm not sure. In a lot of different sections, I don't think all of them, we've got a wallpaper, or at least it looks like one, which has a zero. Might be a placeholder. I can't tell, but I wouldn't mess with it. Uh, probably would cause issues. Could be completely wrong, but yeah. Also got snowy ground. In case you want to do uh, something more like the final level, you can replace it with the normal street. And you've got all sorts of different doors they use to get in and out of rooms. You've also got two different balconies. You've got mansion balconies, which are much smaller than the standard one. But they both work as just ledges if you don't want to, like, build more room when it's off the edge. Yeah. <laughs> that is the house section. And you've got music. We can get to this a bit later. Our enemies. Needs to be placed in a room. Or oh, hey, what you fight. Uh, let's jump into placing the Reaper. He's in objectives. And so is this car. So you place him down. Player spawn in the vehicle. Uh, whenever he interacts with the car to uh, change weapons. It'll push him back. Which is why I recommended giving the extra room. So he doesn't get stuck in the uh, wall. Now we will start placing our map. Doesn't have to be anything complicated for starting out. Keep in mind this is just a tutorial. I'm going to do a roof bit. For this I'll use the club background. It can be a bit darker. And let's put it off to the right. Now uh, we go on to placing doors so we can actually get in and out of the house. We use a basic door. You place it on the wall and it removes... It doesn't actually move the wall boundary, but in-game it does so, but not in the editor. You want one in like every single room so you can get in and out. Now we go on to stairwells, how to get up and down. I'm going to go with one on each side to uh, give a bit of maneuverability. And keep in mind you have to place them exactly on top of each other, like every time, so that it works properly. And uh, for the stairwells on top, you actually have to change the direction to down. Let's say they changed visually speaking. And uh, the stairwells don't work unless the direction is down. At, when it's the one that's meant to be sending you down. They can actually go up and down properly. I forgot to put a door here. And yeah, that's that. Now we can move on to enemies. We won't go anything too complicated, probably just zombies and uh, vampires. Now when you're placing down shamblers as they're called, you need to also place down a shambler head and it'll automatically link with a red line. You don't need to do anything fancy to link it. That should be good for uh, room placement and uh, enemy placement. I put one out there and I'll do something cool with them just to make the level a bit more aesthetically pleasing or just a cool bit. We've also got traps here which you can use to attack the reaper. Not too complicated. You have to uh, 
just place it down, I think, at that level. Uh, let's move it here. And we can flip it left using X scale. Uh, you want it, I think, to be touching the door. And then we use the trap activator. And we place that down, automatically links. Now something we need to do is uh, increase the Y scale of the doors. So I'd recommend this. You just right click it, click Y scale, normal large, like 1, 2, or 1.2. And it makes it a little bigger, because we have vampires who are actually taller than zombies. They can't fit through doors that aren't, uh, y scared up, and they just get stuck, which, bad lover design. Now we can move on to cover, which we will use cover to make the room more interesting. You need a lot of cover, and that the Reaper has plenty of stuff to hide behind when fighting enemies. It's just the best way to do stuff. And you can change the uh, states that they're in. You can have sit or idle. Sit, it just changes how they look and sometimes act. You've got, you can change the state to, and every enemy has a couple of different states. Most, I think, I have just two. You have idle, which is their standard. You've got sleep and smoke. I think uh, the uh, bullies, sorry, punks, only have smoke, no other enemy does. Now I'm gonna do a little cool outside area. I like doing this, you can just take uh, some sort of seating, maybe table, and this is just my own touch on stuff. You don't need to do it, and it's not like something everyone does, I just like to. You want to put a bar chair in a, uh, not actually that tape, I think you take a, it's in miss, sorry, miscellaneous or misc, which are decorations. You've got a table of cigarettes, and you can have a, uh, brawly out here who's smoking, kind of adds a bit. You can also put a light out here, or like dark lights. They're not too tall, and they add a bit of atmosphere. And you also want to light the outside. You don't always have to, but I recommend lighting it. Here we have kitchen counters and kitchen cabinets. Uh, they've got like different dark areas to show what direction it's facing, in a way. Um, you just shift click and do a line of them in a direction. So, uh, I will do kitchen counter and shift click to the right to create a kitchen counter. Not too complicated. And yeah, it's a surface to put stuff. Like, you can put a shambler head, stuff like that. And you've got cabinets, which. You can just do the same thing. Hey, so this tutorial took a long time, so I will actually be splitting it into three parts. Thank you so much for watching. I will catch you in the next one. <laughs>